With the September Fashion Week schedule now over, I thought that we could jump back to look at fall 2023 trends, things that you can wear now, incorporate into your wardrobe, but I suspect many of these trends you actually already own. And I'm going to show you how I interpret them for my own closet and with my own styling, because I think there are always little tidbits that we can take from the runway and inject into our real life outfits. I'm just going to get onto it, but I will be sure to link all of the items that I'm wearing down in the description box below in case you want to check anything out. Now the first one is centered all around color and this is one that I was really excited to see. It's the color red and we're seeing this everywhere and for me the reason why I love this is it's a color that works really well with my complexion uh, especially with my darker features it kind of just pops against my skin tone but it means that right now there is a real abundance of red items so it's kind of a great opportunity to pick and choose the ones that really work for you especially if you're one who does love this color so there are a few different ways that i think that you can wear this trend the first being head to toe so going either for a matching set a tonal look or just a full-on dress so i'm wearing this really beautiful maxi net dress this is a new in piece that i just bought from h&m love that it's affordable silk blend the other way is to incorporate one red element into your outfit whether it's a, a top, a jumper, a skirt, a pair of trousers, something like that that is one of the core items or foundational pieces of your look. We can do some color blocking with this if we want, but it's a nice way to help tone down the color, which is quite a loud shade. The final option is to look at ways that we can sprinkle it in in minor ways. So either with a printed tee that has elements of red on it, or maybe we want to look to our accessories to add in that little red pop of color. Personally, this is one that I'm going to be wearing all throughout spring, summer here in Australia, and I think the timing of it works really well. In terms of tone, often I saw it was a lot more scarlet hued, but I think you can easily go with more of an orange tone base if that suits your complexion better. All here for the tomato girl look. <laughs> now we're seeing this real continuation of that quiet luxury trend, which is not really a trend. I think it's more of an anti-trend, and it's one that you don't have to buy into luxury brands to actually be able to replicate but I'm seeing it also referred to as normcore 2.0 and I really like this because it feels very achievable approachable and again something that you probably already have in your wardrobe it doesn't require you to buy anything new and the thing I took away from the runway was really the proportions and I love that we're seeing some of those older trends that we've added into our closet being continued here. So the oversized blazer, which is something that I personally still love, and it's more just imagining it in fresh ways or even just thinking about the color palette, which is really kind of muted and paired back here, which I think is where you get that nod to the quiet luxury trend. So I've opted for three different looks inspired by three different runway outfits. So we have the Miu Miu look, which is very kind of sports like with the leggings. I have decided to kind of make this feel a little bit more ladylike feminine as opposed to too sporty by adding the Mary Jane flats which is something that was a big hero piece for me over my autumn winter season and I really want to continue that through. Then we have the second look which is inspired by Gucci and this is something that I think is really easy to approach. I've gone with a white tee as opposed to a shirt because I wanted to make it feel more casual and relaxed. A nice tailored blazer but you could also go for something super oversized and then I've gone for a sort of relaxed straight leg jean with a ballet flat love that then the final one i think this is probably my favorite the prada runway i just absolutely adored their fall winter collection i thought it was stunning so we've got kind of the slouch knit with the mini skirt and then the oversized blazer over the top and what i like about this is that the blazer actually is longer than the length of the skirt and you have that kind of play on proportions there than just with a cute flat really nice way to kind of do this norm core trend and you can you've added to your wardrobe over seasons past. If you're a millennial like me, chances are that you wore a peplum in your time. I definitely had a real abundance of them at one point <laughs> and there was something I was wearing every single day. I think many of us probably can recall this very specific look which was kind of a scuba peplum top, very form-fitting warm with leggings or a skinny jean. I mean iconic right but now we're kind of seeing this peplum being introduced in more of a relaxed way and I really like this because it just feels a bit more chilled out doesn't feel quite so uptight and I've been loving seeing how all the girls have been wearing this on the September fashion week circuit lots of great inspiration there for me I'm going to be looking to pair my peplum tops which I've got a couple actually with more of a relaxed tailored trouser something that is longer through the leg to add in that ease and chill or alternatively with denim and actually the second look 
definitely calls in on another trend that I'm going to talk about a bit later, which is sheer elements. I'm really curious to know if you wore the peplum back in the earlier 2000s, whether you will be revisiting it now. Oh, and also you could easily throw on the long black coat, another trend I'm going to talk about very soon, uh, with one of these looks too, which I think just adds in another chic element. There was a real kind of overtone of this kind of 80s power dressing, this working girl vibe in a lot of the runways, particularly Saint Laurent. And I'm really loving that structure, those kind of more tailored elements. The way that I can continue to carry on those oversized blazers, I've got one from Sport Max, which does have a bit more structure to it, which really suits and leans into this trend really well. And I'll be pairing that with kind of a little mini skirt and some cute flats. But what I'm really taking out of this is reaching for things that do have that more structural component that are a little bit more tailored and that aren't quite as fluid as some of the styles that I've been wearing a lot more. So we've got kind of a really nice tailored trouser, which I've worn with a cotton poplin shirt, which has this really nice stiffness to the fabric and it kind of sits really nicely with the trousers and I think you can also see that structured element coming through in the blazers that I've selected. I think probably the looks that I like the most were the ones that featured these structured blazers with the mini skirts or the just above the knee skirt. I just thought that that was such a chic vibe and a look that I have worn kind of on and off over the past sort of decade and a half. I love an off the shoulder moment and I was really excited to see that this is one of the trends for the autumn winter season. For me, it really does feel like more of a spring summer moment, but I do have a couple of more like knitted off the shoulder tops, which are really kind of perfect for that transitional season and a longer sleeved ones. I think this is a nice way that we can bare our shoulders, add in a little bit of sexiness and really counterbalance it with those, I guess, more relaxed elements in our wardrobe. And I love that kind of high low play on styling. So for me, it'll be things like opting for a monochromatic moment where I've got this knitted off the shoulder top, which is, I think it's about 18 months old now. I got it a while ago from Marl with a fluid draped trouser. For a little bit of that Parisian quite luxury vibe, I paired a striped off the shoulder top. This is a really cheap and cheerful buy with a crinkle cotton skirt to add in some really fun texture. And then for the final look, I want to show you just how you could wear one with some jeans and make it feel a little bit more casual and less done up. Next trend to mention is metallic footwear, and this is one that I personally really love. I've actually had a pair of silver shoes on my wish list for quite some time now, so again, there's an abundance, so much to choose from, and I think metallics can act as a really fun neutral, something that adds in a point of difference. I actually have a pair of sneakers from Onitsuka Tiger, which I will be wearing to kind of delve into this trend as a starting point. These are a white base with a silver accent, which feel like a real nod into this trend, but also this is a shoe style that is currently kind of gaining in popularity, especially as people start to shift away from the Adidas Samba. You can see that I've opted to wear it with quite a minimal, simple outfit here, but for me, also one that I can wear with my leggings if I kind of want to dress them up a little bit, wear them with my fluid draped trousers. For me, I'd be using this shoe like a neutral, a bit of a grounding piece rather than centering my whole outfit around it. Sheer has been around for a while but we're seeing it continue to pop up on the runways and I love this because it means that it's really a trend that is here to stay, something we can incorporate into our wardrobe with longevity in mind. Personally I really like to amp up the fact that things are sheer so I got this really beautiful kind of sculptural sheer plissé top from Tibby and I'll be wearing that with a little black bralette underneath. Really is a nice way to show a little bit of skin but I'm still covered up at the same time. For a little bit more of a subtle take, those kind of semi-sheer merino knits from Arquette and Cos are a brilliant way to play with this trend. Another colour trend, butter yellow, oh, and I love to see this one too as yellow is one of my happy colours, particularly this muted desaturated shade. For me, it's going to be all about the head to toe vibe. I have this kind of beigey butter yellow slides from Totem, which I got for the autumn winter season, and I think that they are just very chic and they look so good when paired with either a maxi or a mini length option. Uh, I do have a sort of twin set vibe from Auntie, which is another way that I can play into this trend and perfect for the spring season where I am in Australia. Again, just like with the red trend, you can do the same thing where you either opt for a full look. You go for one piece that incorporates that color and you pair it back to your wardrobe staples and other neutrals that you feel really confident in. Or the other option is to look to accessories or just minor ways that you can inject that, whether it's maybe part of a print or whether it's part of a t-shirt, some sort of a graphic tee that kind of adds in a little bit of visual interest, but also incorporates that color. Then we have the long black coat, which really was quite a dramatic piece when we saw it walking down the runway. And I love that kind of floor sweeping 
jacket moment. I think that it is really quite powerful and it just feels really quite fashionable and I think is also really practical too. Now I don't have anything that is quite an exact match. I do actually have a coat from Dunst which is a really dark charcoal grey which probably fits the vibe a little bit more. It's not quite floor length but very similar. Instead I decided to style up this black trench that used to belong to my mum and I think here is a really great opportunity to play with proportions in terms of the lengths of the garments that you're wearing. So for me I really like those longer jackets worn with something that is shorter underneath. I think it's a great way to kind of break things up. So I paired it with a black mini and also just a really black oversized knit. So kind of that norm core quite luxury vibes but also playing into this trend and you can kind of see there's a lot of intermixing of all the different trends throughout this season and also from seasons past which I'm personally really really loving. It makes it really easy to kind of feel current and like what you're wearing is really fashionable. Most of the looks that I saw really did lean into that monochromatic moment so all black or going for that stark element of contrast paired with white. Finally, I just wanted to touch on a couple of jewelry trends that I noticed and it seems like the chunky statement jewelry pieces are back. Whether it's a really beautiful chunky earring, a huge statement choker, even just big bracelets, that seems to be the look du jour at the moment and I think it's a really fun way to play with style, especially if you are opting for those more minimalist aesthetics. I've also noticed that there's a lot of those really organic textures as well, which are really pretty and I think add a softness to the dimension of the actual pieces themselves. Personally, I'll be sticking to adding one of these elements into my outfit. So it's maybe a statement earring or a statement necklace rather than opting for both. And this is a great way to play around and layer your kind of more statement chunky pieces with your fine jewelry. So those are the autumn winter trends that I'm loving and how I would personally be incorporating them in my own wardrobe. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you got some outfit inspiration if you are new here I would love for you to subscribe and I will see you next week with a brand new video thank you so much for spending some of your day with me and I'll see you soon bye